Today, I am joined by the incredibly talented and inspiring Ashlyn Maddox. Ashlyn is an incredible actress, singer, and dancer. She has been a part of many incredible productions, including The Wizard of Oz, Cabaret, and Jerome Robbins Broadway. Ashlyn made her Broadway debut in Parade and is currently starring in it, portraying the roles of Lila and Montine. Thank you so much, Ashlyn, for joining me on The Inspiration Show. It is such an honor to speak with you. Thank you for having me. Do I have your permission to post this episode of The Inspiration Show on social media? Oh yeah, go for it. Thank you. So when did you discover that you had a passion for singing, dancing, and theater? I remember when I was very young, I was always like involved in choirs and like singing at the church. I always sang, um, but I discovered like acting and dancing way later. And that ended up being like in the form of musical theater. So it was kind of like out of necessity, I discovered the other two because I loved to sing. That was never the issue. But my mom was like, okay, well, if you wanna do something with that, like we might need to take some acting classes or, you know, and it just kind of went from there. I love how there are so many different forms of art and all of them kind of tie in together so you know when you're good at one you kind of get trained in those other ones and then you kind of get pushed out on the stage and yeah. the rest is just an awesome journey yeah I had teachers that were like would notice potential or something you know I'd be involved in a show of theirs and they're like you know what like if you really enjoy this you should add like a tap class or you should take hip-hop you know and pushed me toward kind of that triple threat you know skill set or else I would have never taken dance classes. Like I was so scared. Are you kidding? <laughs> yeah, it's the same with me. Like I act and I dance, but I can't sing. I like I to think I can sing, <laughs> but I can't sing. Oh. So what inspired you to become a performer and who has been an inspiration of yours throughout your career? I, I less so have like, I mean, I definitely have idols. Like I grew up, you know, with there were people like, Carrie Butler, Jen Colella, there are people that I idolized for sure in the industry, but more so like as a quote theater kid, I was obsessed with like shows. Mm -hmm. Like I would yeah. get obsessed yeah. with Into the Woods and then Sondheim and I would get obsessed with JRB and uh, Spelling Bee was a big one, You're in Town, you know, like you just find these shows that helped, I guess, grow this love and this passion and my mom also she was the one that like because it was such a hobby and it was it was something I did in school out of school I listened to musicals but I never thought of like I wasn't as a child planning like this is my career this is what I want to do I just I thought it was so fun and my mom at one point we were in the car and I was saying like it's so like, why do people have to go to college for math and science? Like it would be so much more fun if you could go for art and music and stuff like that. And she's like, Ashlyn, you know, you can do that, right? <laughs> and I, it just like kind of blew open those possibilities. So my mom, like, I give her a lot of credit for like, never, she always kept those doors open. and was like, this is possible and you can do it. You're allowed to and always supported me in that. It's amazing how it started as a passion and you had all these opportunities and like, look where you are now. It's so special to, you know, start in a choir because you think of it as a passion or like a fun pastime or like a hobby. And then to know that you can do it as a career and pursue that one thing that you love, it's mind blowing. Yeah. So can you take us back to the first time that you experienced theater and what you were thinking at the time? I saw this... <laughs> So again, back to my mother, because <laughs> she put me into an acting class. Also, sorry about these sirens, but she put me in an acting class, kind of shoved with love. And I was like, let's like, just see if you like this. I was in, I think, fifth grade at the time. And that theater that was providing that class had auditions for their upcoming like community theater musical. And it was Your Good Man, Charlie Brown. So young kids could audition for it. They wanted a young, you know, cast. And I prepared to audition for the show. And at the last second was like, mom, I'm too scared. I chickened out. She's like, that's okay. Like, no pressure. You don't have to do something you don't want to do, but let's just go see it. And so I remember in yeah, fourth or fifth grade sitting in the audience of this little community theater watching kids put on your good man, Charlie Brown. And my now friend, Abby Weeks was 
playing Sally. And I remember sitting there watching her do my new philosophy and being like, I wish I was up there. Like, it was just this feeling of like, I should have auditioned. I would be having fun. I would love to do that. I went home that night and learned the whole song. <laughs> like, I was just, it was one of those moments. So that was community theater. And then, you know, I had one of those moments when I saw like the tour of Lion King or you see Wicked for the first time, like just those magical, like, what is theater? It's amazing how it just, it pulls you in without even trying to, like they're just on stage telling that story eight shows a week and just the impact that it has on an audience. It's different for every single person in that audience, but it's so, so special when you experience it. And then having that, I want to do that moment. It's, yeah. it's just amazing. And then when you have your moment or like your Broadway debut or like your first time in a show and you think back to those moments, it's just amazing to see how that journey comes and ends. So you have been a part of many incredible productions such as Ride the Cyclone, The Wizard of Oz, Cabaret, Little Women, Ragtime, Jerome Robbins Broadway, Freaky Friday, and Saturday Night Fever. What were your experiences like participating in these productions and do you feel that they've impacted you and helped you sh being shaped into the performer that you are today and have they prepared you for Broadway in any way? Oh yes. I was telling some friends the other day that like even summer stock, which is kind of like, I mean, you do it to fill a resume, to get experience. It's something that, yeah, a lot of college kids do it. It's so much fun and it just builds so much character and you apply, you're able to apply what you're learning in school to professional theater. So that's a lot of people's um, first experience with it. And it was mine. I worked at Wagon Wheel in Indiana um, for several summers. And that process, as crazy as it is to do like you learn a show in two weeks you put it up you learn the next one you put it up and it's super quick it was actually super comparable to what we did at city center because the encores process is like a two or three week oh, process so we learned parade in like the same time I was doing summer stock schedules so it's just that like fast pace but still professional learning environment summer stock 100% prepared me and then working in companies like with Jerome Robbins Broadway that I did at Tuts in Houston, that was more with a company of like veteran actors, like people who were, have been in the industry, people that I looked up to. And so being able to work with them and kind of be the youngest and greenest in the room, I learned a lot from like, what are their behaviors and how do they approach the material and how do they approach running a show for, for this long? And like, how do they get through eight shows, especially because that was such a heavy dance show. So like learning from them, yeah. It's so special when you get to watch actors, even ones that you've especially like seen on stage or ones that you idolize. It's so special to see them working behind the scenes because you really only get to see them do the show, but you don't know what work went into performing the show and how it got to how it is. Exactly. That's how I feel about all of these people here too. Like, are you kidding me? The people Incredible that I'm with. Yeah. incredible show incredible cast is just incredible <laughs> so out of all the roles that you have stepped into is there one that you feel best represents you I feel like Jane Doe like doesn't represent necessarily like Ashlyn as a person but I remember thinking because I've gotten to play her twice now at McCarter and Arena and both times that I was doing that role it was so fulfilling as a performer because I feel like, I mean, I love anytime there's like a stunt in a show or like flying, like I love those theatrics, that circus kind of feel and Jane Doe gets to fly. So there's that element. I love comedy, especially physical comedy. And she's just a quirky, weird, headless doll girl. So that was there. And I feel like today and, and I'm hopefully being proven wrong because we have revivals like Parade and Sweeney and such. But like while I was in school, there was not a lot of legit mm -hmm. being done, or at least like they coached us more on, on belting and more contemporary styles, which is great. But I remember always wishing like that I could use my legit more. And Jane Doe is one of those soprano roles that I just got to do, sing like that every night. And so she felt super fulfilling to play as a performer. 
That's awesome. And you are currently joining me from your dressing room at the Bernard B. Jacobs Theater on Broadway, where you perform Parade, and it's your Broadway debut, and you portray the roles of Lila and Montine. And Parade tells the true story of Leo and Lucille Frank, who were a Jewish couple living in Georgia when Leo was falsely accused of a crime he didn't commit. And the show teaches us lessons of humanity, faith, trust, love, and justice. So can you share with us a little bit about your Parade journey leading up to this point? So I moved to New York in August, believe it or not. Just the pandemic kind of, I graduated in 2020 from Texas State. So that was into the whole pandemic. And we didn't know really what was going to happen with the industry or New York, blah, blah, blah. Fast forward, I finally make the jump here. And I had done Cyclone and a few other things at that point. And my manager sent me a self-tape request for a parade. And I was like, oh, this is cool for City Center. I was like, this is really cool. Like, I feel really right for this. They were looking for 18 and up to play the girls at that point. So I was like, okay, cool. Like, I look young. <laughs> like, let's, let's go for it. So I sent some tapes. I felt really good about it. Didn't hear anything. And at some point I saw Telsey post a casting call for younger girls for like 13 to 17. I was like, oh, dang, like, it didn't go my way. They're just, they're looking for younger. That's fine. Like, let it go. So I, I mean, I still thought about it a little bit, but I was like, this one's not my gig. And then my manager called me one day, probably a month after I submitted anything and was like, Hey, do you remember those tapes you sent for parade a while back? Yeah. And she's like, they don't want you for the role that you submitted for originally, but they want you for one of the factory girls. I was like, what um so that it was a whirlwind getting cast in that because it was just something that I had told myself like we're not gonna get this it's it's not in the cards and then out of nowhere I'm making my New York debut at City Center and yeah then not long after we got word that it was transferring and that they wanted me to come with it so it was it's just been so freaking cool and like every step of the way I feel so like what did I do to deserve this how uh, did I get picked to do this it's just I'm so incredibly grateful it's so awesome I mean you all are incredible and that feeling when you send in a self-tape for a role but they want you for a different role yeah it's, it's just so hard to describe that feeling to see that you know you get to play even like a larger role in that story and it's so special I mean the factory girls were incredible the song has been on repeat and I think the, <laughs> yeah. the the Broadway transfer I think I can speak for all the cast and myself when that was like the greatest news I was so happy I mean we were hoping we didn't know anything for so long I know I had people asking assuming they're like you're going mm -hmm. to Broadway right I'm like I really have no I had a feeling <laughs> I have to say I did have a feeling <laughs> I had a feeling so when you were first given the script for this incredible piece of theater how did you approach it and interpret this story and these characters knowing that it was a true story and real people? You definitely take more care with it, I feel like. There's still a ton of creativity and play when you're coming up with these characters. And like the Factory Girls, for example, they're based on real young girls that testified and worked for Leo. But like one of their names is Montine Stover and now within the musical we have Iola Stover and we also have Montine so the names are a little different but just knowing that that these were real people who lived real lives and you know affected Leo Frank and and what happened to him like you just take I feel like that extra step of care when stepping into their shoes and we have this amazing dramaturgy packet that our dramaturg Cammie Hancock made. And it's just full of so much information that helps put you in the world, like what the courtroom looks like, where people were even sitting and what it felt like, what the people and places, you know, it's just so many details that help you step into that world. So that was super helpful. So after rehearsals and an incredible run at New York City Center and many previews on Broadway and now being officially open, how does it make you feel to be telling the story and what elements of the show inspire you and what positive messages have you taken from Parade so far personally? I feel so 
lucky to be telling this story. It's not often, I feel like, in this career that you do something that feels this impactful. Like, I, you know, I love every type of theater for different reasons, and it's fulfilling to do, you know, all these different genres, but to step into a true story like this that you feel like is immediately impactful is just rewarding in a whole other way. And I'm learning from the people on stage. Like, what was the second part of that question? Sorry. Yeah, just the elements of the show that inspire you and what you've taken away from it. Yes. Um, one element I want to talk about is Michael Arden's use of keeping us on the stage with our fellow actors for much of the show. So you feel this kind of playing space of actors who then step into these roles and step up onto you know this platform that a lot of the show takes place on. And while they're doing that and telling their little piece of the story, everyone else is sitting there giving their attention and energy and love, you know, or whatever is needed to help propel this story. And that's just something like I've never felt in any production. It's so unique and so cool to feel that every night or else like, yeah, I, I feel like the story would be a lot harder to tell without that care. Yeah, like what you said earlier, like when you say that you love all kinds of theater, I completely agree, but I can't think of very many shows that have been on Broadway or just shows in general that are based off of a true story and solely told based off of like historical events that have happened. Right. And, you know, for this story to be told through theater, it's the most incredible way and through song to portray a message. I personally think the arts is one of the greatest ways to tell a story and everyone's just doing it so beautifully and I cannot wait to see it live. Aww. So by being a part of the show every night with audience members coming from all over the world, what is one lesson or message that you want people to take away from Parade? Mm. I want people to walk away feeling like, or being fearless in the face of injustice. Like there is right and there is wrong and there is truth and there is uh, you know not truth. <laughs> and we live in a lot of gray areas in life, but when you know something is right or you know something is true, like being able to stand for that, even when you know, maybe everyone around you doesn't. So you see the people of Georgia, you know, fall victim in this play to, or at least playing the girls, it feels like, you know, they really get swept up in this lie and in this thing that maybe they end up believing is true, but you know, they somewhere deep down, they know that they're lying and that's true for so many people. And there are characters in the show that end up barely standing up for Leo, but He's one of the only people, and Lucille is one of the only people that like goes to the end claiming his innocence and really like standing for that. So I just want people to know that it is relevant today <laughs> and that they can still take away from the show, like be fearless in the face of injustice. Mm -hmm. Like if we were to touch on all the lessons that this show teaches and brings oh, away. I was going to say, like, we'd be here for hours, but it's so special to learn, you know, to speak up for the truth and to stand up for what you believe in and for those that you love. So the cast album for Parade has been recorded and was released today. What was your experience like being in the studio recording these beautiful songs and getting to be part of an original Broadway cast album? It was unbelievable. Just one of those things that you, you hope you'll do one day, but I mean, you don't know if you're going to be on an original Broadway cast recording and what that looks like. And it was just a like a non-stop day of like, okay, we got to get this song done. We're getting these people in. Okay, girls, you go do this. Ben's coming in. Like, and the orchestra was there the whole day and Jason was there the whole day conducting. It was just, yeah, a, a crazy jam-packed schedule with all of us, you know, wanting, the, you know, having the same goal of like, we want to preserve this. We want to do it right. We want to get it all done. And we did. And it was just, so wild to be standing there and having like Jason Robert Brown conduct your Broadway cast recording. It was so cool. 
It was so beautifully done. And I'm so happy that these songs have been recorded so people can listen to them from anywhere because they tell this story so beautifully. And I mean, just the lyrics like Jason Robert Brown, just incredible. And it was just so special, you know, to hear it. And I just can't imagine what it's going to be like to hear it live. It's going to be awesome. So soon in August. I know. I'm so excited. Looking back on everything you have achieved in this industry, what advice would you give your younger self entering the industry? I would say that I would say to myself that your friends are so important, like your support base, the people that you're surrounding yourself with, who you like share life with. I was super lucky to have an amazing class at Texas State that I'm still close friends with. And you just need that group of people. They don't even necessarily have to be in the industry, but it's helpful if they are and they understand it. But just to be there when this is not all fun and it's not always success. Like you hit rock, you're gonna hit rock bottom and you're gonna see people succeed or at different rates, at different times, doing different things. And you can play this comparison game, but to just have people around you who love and support you. And they're like, no, you're doing your art. You know, you're doing your thing. And you know, what's meant for you is gonna come. So yeah, just to keep your friends close. I love that the support system is so important and they're really there to provide that love and support and we'll also read lines for you. And be your self-tape readers. (laughs) Yeah, it's just so awesome to see that support and to have it to know that you are able to go out and achieve those dreams and make your dreams a reality. Ashlyn, thank you so much for joining me on The Inspiration Show. You are absolutely amazing. And it was such an honor to speak with you. Thank you for inspiring me. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for having me. And I'll see you in August. See you in August.